and welcome to Business Line. It's been a few weeks since the European Central Bank launched its massive stimulus program. Mario Draghi came to the European Parliament to speak about the first results of the so-called quantitative easing and to defend his plan. The ECB president sounded very determined, saying the governing council intends to carry out the purchases at least until the end of September 2016 and in any case until there is a sustained adjustment in the path of inflation. Let's take a closer look at the not-so-warm welcome Mario Draghi got at the European Parliament. The ECB's debt-buying program remains on the right track, according to the European Central Bank's president. Speaking to European lawmakers in Brussels, Mario Draghi said the ECB's deployment of monetary stimulus policies is accelerating the transmission of lower interest rates. Under the ECB's expanded. The pace of purchases so far puts the overall program on track to reach a total of 60 billion euros in March. At this point in time, we see no signs that there will not be enough bonds for us to purchase. But Draghi had short shrift for one question from a left-wing Portuguese MEP regarding the ECB's treatment of Greece's financial difficulties. Are we blackmailing Greece? Well, it's a bit rich when you look at the exposure that we have with Greece. The ECB has 104 billion of exposure to Greece. This is uh, equal to 65% of Greek GDP, and it's the highest exposure in the Eurozone. So it's a, what sort of blackmail is this? It's up to you to judge. Draghi has previously said he's ready to start accepting Greek bonds again as collateral for lending to Greek banks as soon as conditions are in place for a successful review of the bailout program. From the moment the European Central Bank announced and then launched QE, the euro has been sinking. And that was one of its aims, to get the eurozone economy back on track through a weaker currency. Let's see who are the winners and the losers of a weak euro. First, the winners. Among them, importers of European goods. Everything is getting cheaper, so more can be bought with the same money. Big oil and gas companies could also be on the winners list, as they could have set lower crude oil prices. And of course, European exporters could benefit from it. The ECB says a 5% decline in the euro's trade weighted exchange rate could boost Eurozone GDP by 0.3%. More on this in our next story on the latest evidence. Manufacturing in the Eurozone has hit a 10 month high, and with services on a 46 month peak, the economic indicators haven't looked this good in four years. With industrial demand for bank loans now surging, there's grounds for believing an economic recovery is gathering pace. And a first rise in business lending in three years is expected to be posted this month. Economic activity in France has also risen for a second month, even if the pace of reforms there remains slow. And prices, while still contracting, posted their strongest showing in eight months. The turn in the credit cycle in the Eurozone for us is one of the key reasons we think the growth out of the Eurozone will be much better in the coming years. Uh, the ECB's QE program can deliver confidence, it can deliver a boost to consumer and investor sentiment, but long term you actually need uh, credit growth to drive the economy forward. The better figures come just as the ECB is starting to spray its hundreds of billions of stimulus euros around the EU economies to boost growth and spur inflation and in global terms offset the rather poorer figures coming out of the world's number two economy, China. As for the losers of a weak euro, these are exporters to Europe. They could feel the pain as their goods suddenly become more expensive for the buyers. These are mainly big US companies who rely heavily on foreign sales and revenues. And finally, airlines. They need to buy jet fuel in dollars and the US currency is getting stronger. And what about us? Europeans could spend more money on locally produced goods, which could now be cheaper than those imported from the US, for example. As for the Americans, the time has come to travel to Europe, as everything just gets cheaper here for the US tourists, and they can now afford more, supporting the European economy at the same time. And it's not only about the Americans and not only about the tourists. Business also takes advantage of the weak euro. 
Pirelli, the world's fifth largest tyre maker, is to be taken over by China National Chemical Corps in a deal worth 7.1 billion euros. It will give the state-owned ChemChina access to technology to make premium tyres, which can be sold at higher margins, and give the Italian firm a boost in the huge Chinese market. But some see it as a sad day for Italy PLC. I think it's a failure, a failure of the overall Italian manufacturing sector, this man says. Our hope is that in the end Pirelli will remain in Italy, at least in terms of headquarters and research and development. The deal that will put the 143-year-old Italian firm in Chinese hands is the latest in a series of takeovers made in Italy by cash-rich Chinese buyers. Analysts say the government has little choice given its financial straits. Italy uh, is probably not in a position really to, to have a huge amount of opposition. Uh, I think if uh, inward investment can provide more, more opportunities for Pirelli and other uh, companies to sell uh, their products in China. The bid for Pirelli marks the return of China's state-owned enterprises to global deal-making after a hiatus caused by a government crackdown on senior officials. U.S. company Facebook is looking for a new way to earn more and it has nothing to do with the currency rates as the social network goes beyond the geographic borders. This is it. This is IT. So long links on Facebook. Those two online newspapers, at least. The social network made a group of media companies an offer they can't refuse. Instead of driving users to external websites as it does today, Facebook could soon host publishers' content articles, that is, inside its own platform. Imagine reading a whole story directly on your personal wall, no more annoying loading time. A trial could begin in the next few months. The tip came from the New York Times, which is one of the candidates, along with BuzzFeed and National Geographic. Now, why would they want to sign up for this since they risk losing precious consumer data? The Palo Alto company is trying to sweeten the deal by putting on the table something never seen before, ad revenue sharing. But basically, the answer is because they have no choice. Far from being just a website, Facebook has become the main gateway to the internet, especially on mobile. Look at this chart from Flurry Analytics. Excluding games and browser usage, Facebook covers about a third of the time we spend on Apple and Android mobile devices. That was it. That was IT. And that was it for now. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week.